Welcome to Daily Success. Listen in on these personal conversations with today's leaders, innovators, and influencers as they discuss daily success principles, systems, and solutions. Get ready for daily success. Now, here's your host. Hi, everybody. This is Tammy Patzer, and this is Daily Success Word of the Day. Today's guest is Sherry Martin, co-founder of WCN Interactive Incorporated, and Sherry is known as the So Social Visionary, and she is a social media specialist with 20 years of online marketing experience. She delights in internet research and her skill in mastering the different social media sites, passion for networking, plus her joy of teaching led her to help small business owners develop their social media marketing strategy for greater results. She is a graduate of Mari Smith's Social Media Mastery Immersion and her continued self-education. Sherry understands the importance of offering continuing education for those seeking knowledge of the ever-evolving social platforms. She's a best-selling author, certified constant contact email marketer, certified speaker with the Women's Prosperity Network, certified trainer, coach, and speaker with leader expert John C. Maxwell's team. She's a business mentor with the Florida Institute of Technology We Venture Ignite 360 program, a certified score advisor and subject matter expert and recipient of the Golden Mouse Award for 2016 Social Media Marketing Leader of the Year. Sherry's always excited to share her expertise through training, coaching, and speaking so others can discover how to eliminate overwhelm, gain (laughs) confidence, and of course, be a social media standout. Today, Sherry is our daily success word of the day expert, and today's word is relationships. So welcome, Sherry, and tell me, what is your definition of relationships? Oh, goodness. Well, first of all, Tammy, thank you so much for having me here and sharing, because one thing that I have learned through the years in business, and I'm in my 20th year of business now with our WCN Interactive. It's evolved over the years, but my husband and I are partners, and our re- our partnership began as a relationship. We were not married when we first started our business. We actually developed a friendship, and through that friendship, it expanded in us putting together our dreams, and we really realized just important how important I should say it is to be friends before you even do any type of business. And that is the philosophy I've used all these 20 years and everything I do. Um, I was a BNI director for a lot of years, uh, business Network international, and I taught networking classes. And what I emphasized with everyone I taught was how important it was to build a relationship because relationships to me is simply making a friend and growing your business. Um, I believe that with relationships, when you are, I guess, you know, meeting someone new or networking with them at any type of event or on social media or anywhere, you have to be willing to really give value. You have to be willing to, you know, focus on that ability to engage so that you can get to know them. And that's how you learn how to serve them. So that's why relationships is so important to me. And that's what I really, truly believe relationships is. It's just simply making a friend and growing your business. Isn't uh, make a friend grow your business your motto or your tagline? It it is. I've actually, um, I'm writing a book on it. I do a lot of um, programs as far as teaching different networking styles. I'm doing a couple right now. Um, I've also written uh, blogs and articles and such on the the way that you do that and, you know, a strategy, how to put a strategy together so that you are truly not just going after the sale because especially now the way we, so we use social media, nobody wants to be sold to. Um, and on social media, you really want to emphasize 
the importance of getting to know them and letting them get to know you as well. And it means you have to be a little bit vulnerable. But yes, I have taken that on as my journey. Um, I started it back in 2006, and it's just developing. And I am, my plans this year is to have that book out here soon because it is ready. It's time. Um, and everybody wants to know more about how I've been able to do it all these 20 years. And that's, you know, so yes, it is my, I guess you're my, my mantra um, about, you know, making that friend and growing your business. Well, I think it is really important because like you said, re relationships are where it's at, especially today where we are all working from behind a computer yes. and often people hesitate to even go out into public. Mm -hmm. With that said, how important is it to create relationships in both the virtual world and the real world? And how do you help people to cross over that line? Oh, great, great question there, Tammy. I, what I do is, um, well, first of all, within social media, I show and share how to make sure that when you're connecting, you start the conversation. Because that's what I find that most people do not do. They just they get this friend request and they and they connect or you know whether it's on Facebook or they're on LinkedIn and somebody wants to connect with them on LinkedIn and they just accept it. They don't go any further and then they say, well, you know, this doesn't work for me. So what I share with them is, why don't you be the one to start the conversation? If you are invited to connect, then go and either private message them or write something on their timeline and just say, hey, thanks. Happy to connect. Um, excited to get to know you and see if they respond back. Same with LinkedIn or if you're the one, you know, basically starting that invitation to connect, then why don't you make sure you do not just leave that default to sit there. Do something. Go look at their profile. See what they have in common and something that would get them I'm excited to respond to you. Don't just ask them what they do. Ask them, how do you serve others? I'm really, in, you know, I'm really intrigued by all that you've been doing. How did you get started in that profession? Very interested in knowing. And it really gets them kind of starting to take notice of you. And that's what it is. It's kind of being um, standing out and being known before you're needed. As you develop that relationship, they realize how much you do care and that you are interested. So you have to take that interest. Um, another thing that I am always focusing on is making sure that you have, that you are actually putting stuff out there on social media that can, can start the engagement. That way when you are maybe meeting somebody face-to-face, -face, networking, um, I always ask them what social platform or, you know, maybe first ask them if they're on social media. These days, everybody is, you know, so I'll ask them what social media platform they're most active on. And then I'll ask them, you know, from there, hey, would you be interested in connecting so we can continue this conversation? Because most of the times we meet people face to face out networking at whatever chamber, association event, conference, you don't really have an opportunity to get to know them then. But if you're interested in where it could lead for them, for you, or maybe some of your partners or clients, then definitely get connected and start that conversation. So do you have any advice for that follow-up conversation? One of the things that I know so many people, and we're again, we're making that transition from virtual or the real world or real mm -hmm. world to virtual and somebody will say, oh, well, give me your business card. What is your take on the use of business cards today as opposed to what it used to be? Because, of course, remember back in the day when we had our tickler files? Oh, yes. <laughs> business card in, and I think people actually did follow up in a different way in the past. What mm -hmm. is your advice for, um, like, let's say we, we meet at a, at a Chamber of Commerce networking event, what should our act, our interaction be like in person? And then how do you suggest we follow up to create a real relationship? Oh, wow. Well, a lot of times when I'm there, I, first of all, I don't hand business cards out. Very rarely do I. Um, if somebody specifically asks for one, it's because we've had a conversation and I know that they want to maybe go check out my website or, or, you know, check out where I am. Or maybe I have on the back of my business card, they can actually 
download a free gift. I have them going to an opt-in. So that's the purpose of me for what for business cards is the only reason I would pass it out if somebody asks. But when I ask, you know, I never, I don't think I ever ask for business cards myself. What I'll do, like I say, I will ask them if they're on social media. I will connect with them right then and there, and get them in in my basically in my network. When I'm starting, and then like, well, for instance, the other evening, last weekend, I was at an event. And I met a lady that we had just connected on LinkedIn. She had reached out to me last week. And so when I saw her, I recognized her right away. And I said, oh, my gosh. And I, you know, I mentioned her name. And I, I told her, I said, you know, you were on my list to call next Monday because I really am intrigued with some of your questions and would love to have a cup of coffee with you. Because she's actually local. But we were not at a local event. Is that strange or what? You know, and so from there... We have, you know, we decided to go ahead and have that cup of coffee. Now, you can't do that with everybody you meet virtually because you don't, you know, live close. So I actually use a webinar system, Zoom. I used to use Skype. Now I love Zoom. So I will actually invite them to get on Zoom with me, and we do a face-to-face -face conversation like you and I are doing right now. To me, it just really solidifies that friendship. So many individuals that connect with others on social media never take it to that next step. They keep emailing back and forth. They're messaging back and forth. You know, pick up the phone. That's the secret sauce. That's how you really can build that relationship and get closer and deeper and understand each other better. So that's pretty much what I do when I am either meeting somebody face-to-face -face or even on social media, and I definitely want to take it further. Well, I think the beauty of having a Zoom call or a Skype call or a Facebook live call, whatever, mm -hmm. a visual representation is you can actually see the body language. And as you know, I'm sitting here, you know, <laughs> yeah. you, so you I, know just by the way I'm reacting to what you're saying that I'm like positively reinforcing what you're saying because I believe what you're saying is accurate. Mm -hmm. If I didn't, you would know that too. And, and <laughs> definitely it you to create this relationship. Mm -hmm. Why do you think so many people are so hesitant to pick up the phone or they try to have these conversations um, through text messages or emails mm -hmm. or Facebook posts or, or people are even now trying to have these relationships with bots, with the, with the messenger bots. I know. And what is your um, opinion about using automation to create relationships and, and where are your lines and limits to, to using it? Well, I mean, automation is very convenient and especially when it comes to email marketing or, you know, uh, at least maybe one of those touches. It's okay to use it if you're providing some value and helping them, again, take it to the next step. But I don't like to have email conversations, set appointments, or determining whether or not we're going to do a, if I offer a proposal. I want to get on the phone and talk with them through that proposal. A lot of times if, I'm if a proposal is requested from me for maybe helping them build a strategy or doing some training or some of uh, some sort... I like to set that face-to-face -face and then arrange that, get on it, and then I send them the proposal so we can actually work it through together. Because I truly believe things get lost, especially in email. Um, you know, people can take the way you say something, and I, I don't know, maybe I'm the only one, I don't think so. I've sent emails that I regretted and wanted to pull them back <laughs> because it was not really the way or the tone that I wanted it to be, you know, thought of. But um, to me, it's just, it's difficult to get the clear message there. The So definitely, I you know, I use automation on email marketing, um, but again, I do direct them to set an appointment with me if they want to do a one-on-one -on -one strategy session of, you know, complimentary strategy session, or if they want to download one of my um, opt-in gifts that they can maybe help them to uh, be a little stronger in their social media or their business that, along that line. But I will tell you about the bots. I really truly believe that bots are going to ruin marketing because I think they're intrusive. I know some people use them. 
I do know Facebook, I think right now has pulled them back. They may have already started, you know, start back up or whatever, but because of the privacy issues around them, you're really letting them intrusive. Those that are using them, I believe are able to use them right now, but they're not allowing new users to use the bots because again, it, it just really in, I don't, it intrudes on you and it's not, it's, it's, it's just not, I don't know I, what the word is. Uh, to me, it, it's it's cold. It's cold. It's just like door knocking. I'm not a door knocker. <laughs> you know, I never was calling. in sales. It's cold calling. And to me, that's what a bot is. It's almost like a cold calling. But a lot of you do, uh, you know, you do opt in and then you have, you know, they require you to opt in and get them. But I don't know. I just like that personal touch. That's how I've been able to grow my business, uh, grow relationships you know there are so many of my friends that I have been able to turn into clients and so many clients that I've been able to turn into friends and I want to honestly believe it's just because I've taken the time to get to know them and I've allowed them to get to know me too it's mm -hmm. that vulnerability and I know there are some people that do not get comfortable it's very uncomfortable for them and right. it stretches them so so it really is interesting with the word relationship and you also do a lot of volunteer type work uh, with SCORE and with the Small Business Development Center. How, how does that work for you as far as relationships and how would you recommend that people use some of these volunteer opportunities and speaking mm -hmm. opportunities um, through SCORE or small business development or even through teaching. I know I've done all those routes also because of uh -huh. social media. Um, how, how does that work for you? Well, what I have found is a few years ago when we first started, I, I really wasn't quite sure where it would lead. And, of course, most of us, you know, we all, we want to be paid for what we know and what we share. What I have found, though, that through the years, it has really helped me, I guess, become an influencer within my community. Um, and I've also been a guest expert on, like, this radio show here today and other uh, opportunities that I've had along the way. But what it does is it allows you to really let others see your knowledge and feel your knowledge and experience your knowledge. There, It's been a great prospecting tool for me um, when people see you. I mean, you can either do one-to-one -one or one-to-many, and many of my groups are, you know, I've, I've spoken up to groups of up to 100, you know, at no, that I didn't charge, and, and I just volunteered my time. It's just a way to really see um, how people can get to know you as well as, um, again, experience you a little, flavor you a little bit before Maybe they're on that cusp. They, they really know they need someone that has, like with your experience. And so they want to get to know you and see exactly. It just proves, it's, it's not that social proof. It's um, the credibility that you lead up to. So it has been very good in our business. And I'd say that I didn't realize that we just spoke recently at our small business development center. When they introduced us, they said that we'd been speaking there for eight years. I didn't even realize that. We started in 2010. We did their wow. very first Facebook class. Yes, and it was probably something we did every month. We did a Facebook class. They charged for it. Um, they did pay us a little bit at that time, too, but they don't do that anymore. Uh, things have changed and because there's so much, so many experts that come and share their value. And it's just really ingraining yourself in your community and giving back to your community, too, because our community has been very good for us, very good to us, I should say. We, we live in a very... Um, we live in a fun place. That's all I say. We're on a beautiful east coast of Florida, <laughs> right up, right below the space coast, and it's yeah. We have a good community. You do live in a very a, a very nice location, and mm -hmm. it is interesting because you're right. I've I've done a lot of teaching and speaking, and um, back in 2009, 2010, I, I still laugh because I have videos where I'm saying Facebook is not a fad. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Is it going to go away now? Is everybody deleting Facebook now? No, not if you're using it for your business. You I, know? Mean, I, I, I used to talk about Facebook and LinkedIn and Twitter 
I, I used to do a program called the top 10 things you should be doing now in social media. I love and it. Of course, yep. I was talking about Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, YouTube, and different things like that. So it, there really is a great value in creating relationships by being of service and yes. providing value in your local communities because, again, it leads to bigger things. You know, even if you're speaking locally and the radio shows, the podcast, TV appearances, they all help you grow this huge online uh, footprint. And that's one of the things mm -hmm. that I'm always telling people about is grow your online footprint and to create these relationships that go both virtual mm -hmm. and real world because I, oh. I do see a, a difference in virtual in the virtual world and the relate in the real world and we have to merge them and match mm -hmm. them up so that people understand that we are real and that we have that human experience even though we're operating a lot from behind our computers so oh. do you actually have um something called 40 conversation starters for Facebook. Can you share maybe three conversation starters so that we can provide some cool value here? <laughs> Definitely. Um, I really truly believe that's where most of us get hung up on when we get on social media because we really do want to grow our business. So we first thing we all think of is how can I sell myself? So my first tip is to do not focus on the sale focus on again that willingness of giving value and you know getting that converse in you know, getting the engaging started so you know just a simple question like what is what book are you reading right now and share you know and how this book has impacted you or something along that line just getting the people started thinking differently and, and not thinking that you're trying to sell them something. You want to get to know them. Every piece of conversation you start, you want to get to know them a little bit better. And it gives you an insight and then how to maybe proceed, whether you're going to send out an email or, you know, you're doing an event, etc. So perhaps just ask, what book are you reading right now? Or what is your favorite movie of all time? Um, another thing is, where have you... You know, where is your favorite place to travel to? Or if you had a dream vacation, where, what, you know, where would you want to go if you were had the opportunity to travel? Those are little things that, you know, you don't think about really meaning anything, but they mean a lot. And with this 40 conversation starters, there's things along that line just really helping you think outside the box so you're not thinking of selling your services all the time. And... Also, making sure you do focus not just on, you know, say Facebook, I mean, it's, you know, conversation starters for Facebook. You can use these universal across all social media. Um, but to create a tribe of people that are interested in getting to know you as well. And this helps you because you want to make sure you're answering the questions as well, not in the text that you put out there. But in the conversation thread as well, get involved in that conversation. Make sure you're responding to everybody that's responding and answering your question. Don't just put it out there and forget about it. Um, you can start it on your personal page or you can start it within a group. Um, you can start it on your business page. You have to have that intention and you have to understand who you're going to attract when you put it out there. Unfortunately, especially on Facebook, our business page does not get but maybe a 1% reach right. any longer. So I'm like Facebook Lives. I always say start these on your personal page and then share them to your Facebook business page or your Facebook groups. Or if you have a private group, of course, it's a little different. But your personal page is where the conversation is happening. That's now, true. I, find I have a lot of. It, it really is. But you have to be very careful because, and that's why these conversation starters are so valuable because you have to be very careful that you're not pushing your business out on your personal page very often. There's a 80 20 percent rule 80 percent needs to be personal conversation, and 20 percent could be business related on your personal page. And if you just keep 
And I see it, unfortunately, too many people pushing business out or talking about nothing but their business on their personal page. They are really not going to have the success that others would have if they just create these conversations. And Facebook Live is one of the best ways to take these conversation starters and turn them into something different because you could maybe talk about your favorite book and how it impacted you and maybe share a little uh, tip that you learned from it and that you how you've imply, applied that into your business and how it has helped you. Those are things that people take notice and then they could start gathering, you know, they, they'll start commenting on your posts as well. So that's pretty much what the conversation starters are all about is to really get them comfortable about having, um, you know, one-on-one -on -one conversations and yet, be talking one to many. And you're actually giving that away and I'll include it in our show notes. Awesome. Um, yes. You actually um, have a one sheet with the 40 topic ideas. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you, it's so funny because um, I've actually been reading some really good books lately that I really should be telling people about because I've been studying a lot about story marketing, storytelling, oh, yes. story marketing. So I have a lot of really good information and in my takeaway, because sometimes what I discover, and I'm sure this is everybody, when we read something, a lot of times we'll pull something out of it that another person doesn't. So our mm -hmm. insights is our unique value to everything yes. that we tell other people about, because Sometimes we see something that other people don't see, just like someone listening to this conversation about relationships. I and mean, we're talking about relationships in a whole different way than is, most yeah. people talk about relationships. Yeah. And so I'm like, I'm very fascinated with this topic. And imagine if we were in a restaurant having this conversation, people <laughs> would be leaning in to hear about, well, What's Sammy and Sherry? What are those two women? Yeah. <laughs> because it would be fascinating to them to hear mm -hmm. about, oh, you mean I could go go add value by speaking at SCORE or small business development? I wonder how to do that. Or they might hear, oh, wow, I wonder what books they're reading that could help me. I mean, it, it's very mm -hmm. interesting how how a conversation like this is so valuable because we are having a real conversation about real yeah, things so that true. real people need to know about. And I, I, I have to ask you because how many times have you asked people when you meet them, how do you get business? And they say word of mouth. Oh, and, yes. <laughs> and then they don't spend money. They don't do this. They hate online marketing. They don't do, I get all my business from word of mouth. What is your take on that when somebody tells you that? Well, I'll be honest with you. When they tell me that they get their business through word of mouth, I say, why don't you switch it up a little bit and do it word, you know, instead of word of mouth, word of mouse, because the mouse is your clicker online and you right. have... You know, I mentioned I, I used to be a BNI director, Business Network International, and we were we taught them that there was you know six degrees of separation. Today, with social media and the way um, we do business, there's six. Uh, there's only three de degrees of separation instead of those six. You have such a greater opportunity to be in front of the right people, the right person, the right group, the ideal client. So definitely, you know, word word of mouth is. You know, I know that we all base on referral marketing. We get in these referral groups, these networking groups, associations, but that is really work. <laughs> it's work to work those groups. Why don't you take it and become, start showing how to, start standing out, start being known before you're needed by standing out on social media and building, becoming an influencer to others. Becoming a resource, you know, we have Google, we have YouTube. People use these tools to find information that they're looking for. They, they get all these blogs coming in through their email inbox. Why don't you be that resource? Why don't you be the one that they turn to? That's how you can stand out and use social media to your advantage. That's, to me, true word of mouth. Word, you know, because you're clicking that mouse away and people will share your information the more you 
stretch yourself, become vulnerable out on social media, the more you create this tribe who become your brand ambassadors and they themselves are your salespeople. That's your sales, your sales staff. Wow, that's really good, good information. Like, like I said, if we were in a restaurant, <laughs> everybody would be listening to, to what we're talking about. So you also offer a complimentary 20-minute social media consultation, and I'll put that into the show notes too. So okay, everybody, great. Thank you. you can have yes. a one-on-one 20-minute conversation with mm-hmm. Sherry about we'll do it. all this stuff. <laughs> Yes. On Skype, on Skype or on Zoom, I imagine Zoom. Mm-hmm. Yes, definitely. We want to be face to face like this. That way, we get comfortable with each other. Yeah, and and again, relationships, and it's such an important word. And that's something I just want to talk to you and everyone about a little bit about the daily success word of the day show. Some people are like they don't quite get it. Okay, like wh- why would you want to talk to somebody? or write a book about daily success, word of the day. And I just want to, I'll talk about it a little bit here since I have this captive audience and you (laughs) get it, is think about it. The conversation we just had about the word relationships, what we did is we allowed you to get to know both of us a little bit more by discussing a concept or a word and we focus in on the value of relationships in our in our world. And of course, we were talking about relationships more in a business sense instead of a personal sense. But the truth is, if you create relationships where people get to know you and understand your values and your service, and I, and of course, the cliche is no like and trust. I mean, we that's been batted around, but it is true. You do mm-hmm. want people to, to understand you and see who you are. And I recently interviewed Marty Ward, and we talked about TAG, talents, oh, yes. abilities, and gifts. And if you think about this in terms of TAG and relationships, you, you have to listen to the conversations with Sherry and with Marty because they go together. And I had another conversation about the word wisdom mm. and how we should use wisdom uh, in our daily success interactions. So I think as you listen to the program and when you get the daily success word of the day book, I think you're really going to understand the power of what daily success word of the day is all about. Oh, <laughs> This is my uh, cash. Oh, adorable. So so, um, he decided (laughs) to make his presence known. Someday I'll tell the story about how my animals get their unique names. Uh, He's cash flow and my other cat is clarity. So cash flow and clarity helped me to remember to focus. And I had a cat named focus also. I love it. I, I do. So before I let you go, Sherry, is there anything else that you want to remind the audience about the word relationships? Well, I think the main thing that you need to do is to really create a strategy around, in other words, an intentional strategy around how you want to connect. And then make sure that with that connection, you're nurturing those relationships it isn't just connecting and then forgetting. It's connecting and nurturing. And that is really going to help you, as I said, simply grow your business by making that friend. That's, that's what it's all about. So, so what your motto again is it's make, make a friend, grow your business. Okay. Make a friend, grow your business. That's the message that I am wanting to really expand out there for everyone how simple it is quit trying to sell we all try to sell and it just you know it gets very tiring it's work it's too hard to sell but it's so easy and it's so simple to just make a friend and grow your business wow i love that so everybody sherry martin make a friend grow your 
business. Again, this has been Daily Success, Word of the Day, and I'm Tammy Patzer. Again, Sherry, thank you so much. Oh, my pleasure, Tammy. Thank you. I have enjoyed it, and I thank you for the invitation to share. Everyone, go make it a beautiful day, and remember, you can create daily success. You've been listening to Daily Success. Tune in again and subscribe. Never miss a moment of daily success.